Good morning, UberTuber Ubers. Short talk in the trailer with the old guy. I'm not out the door yet. Uh, it's uh, maybe a couple of minutes after 7. And I uh, thought, well, I got time. I'm, I'm going to do a little vid. I kind of wanted to mention a couple of things in, uh, in addition to the uh, the one I did last night about you know just li just listen to some be beautiful music and relax and and do remember that there is such a thing as beauty after all. But um, I thought, well, after I, I finished the vid, I I eventually got around. There's only two Christian songs that I ordinarily listen to if I'm in music listening mode. They're both, I think they're 90s uh, Christian people. Uh, I don't know if they're even still alive. But uh, one of my favorite uh, songs is a, a young lady. She used to have red hair. <laughs> I hope she's still alive. Margaret Becker. Wow. And it was called uh, Deep Calling Deep. I believe that's it. And uh, you, can, you can look it up on this algorithm here. And uh, there's several iterations of it. And... Margaret, that girl can sing, hmm. and and when she gets with it, it's like, man, that's all I want to do is just listen to her. Uh, you know, it, it's like ear, it's like ear medicine. It helps you hear better. And I was thinking about some of those things a little bit this morning. Oh, the other one. Sorry, I didn't want to forget because I do that a lot, don't I? Um, the other song I listen to is a guy named Gary Chapman, and uh, it's called "A Sweet Glow of Mercy." And uh, there's a couple of iterations of it, and it's just, it's got a nice clean sound, and uh, there's a couple of little driving riffs in there that are pretty nice, guitar work and stuff. Anyway, uh, good song, good good tune, and it makes you just sort of center up and think, yeah, you know. So I was, I was sitting there thinking, I thought, today's little, uh, you know, word for the day from the old guy, <laughs> pay attention, learn it, pay attention to me. <laughs> I just did it. Do you see? Did you notice that? And so, in other words, we're bombarding others with, you need to pay attention to me. And then, the, it seems like every fact in, in the universe lately is all jumping down our throats saying, you need to pay attention to us. All the stuff that's happening around, whatever, the big news, the swirly, misty, terrifying, boom, boom. Are we going to blow ourselves all up or what? You know, or something. And so, uh, everybody pays attention. Most of them don't know it. <laughs> they're unaware that they're paying attention. <laughs> but what I mean by pay attention is, if you ever walked into a, a strange room, uh, let's say in a motel, you, you've never been here before, and the, you don't know the floor plan, can't get the light to work for some reason, or can't find the light switch, try to get used to a terrain like that, that it's like, boop, bumping into furniture, uh, even if you're in familiar terrain sometimes, when you wake up in the middle of the night, if you, if you don't have a light source, it's, it's easy to get disoriented, pay attention. So in other words, we um, extend our eyesight, we extend our ears, we cogitate, we, I got to remember this, we do that kind of stuff when we're paying attention, and we have to pay attention, we do it all the time. It's just most of the time we're unaware of it. <laughs> so what we can do then in the new creation is we can begin to pay attention to the most important stuff. Actually, the central feature of reality, if you'd like to know. If you're wrong on this one, you've got everything wrong. So pay attention. <laughs> just sit there quietly and I'll do, this, I'll do it with you. What's around you? What's above you? Which way is your back facing? How old are you in days? And what happens is the attention is paid. In other words, in the quiet, you begin to pay attention. And so if you use your own senses or you ask Jesus, Lord, you're in me. Help me to pay attention in the right way. And so we can, so to speak, listen for his voice. We can see his, well, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, no one saw his face. But uh, one of them, I believe it was Elijah, saw his back as he was going by. Something like that. So in the face of Christ, now we want a new vision, see. 
We want to hear differently than we used to. We want our senses to be operating according to what's real. So if I touch that thing and it really is hot, I want to know that it's hot before I hurt myself. Duh. We pay attention to the stuff that matters, the stuff that we think matters. And then, of course, there's thousands and jillions of people trying to tell you their version of what you should be concerned about, about what really matters. And they're trying to maybe push an idea or an agenda, and, and, and maybe they have a faith, maybe they have a, a political viewpoint. I don't know. But everybody's trying to gain your attention. Have you noticed? Me too. I'd ignore that old guy if I were you. <laughs> so we pay attention by, it's, a, it's a, essentially an effort. When you say, I've got to pay my bill, I've got to pay my dues, okay, I something's flowing out of me. We'll call it greenbacks, dollars, I'm paying. But there's, there's an energy that comes up out of you, out of your soul, uh, ratified it in the heart and the mind, and it's one voice. It's There's only one you. And the you of you on the inside, the real person, the one who calls me, me, <laughs> you can rest in the arms of your maker today. And in other words, if you're not, if you're looking around in the world and, and, and you're not seeing him, you miss the whole point, man. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're listening for what is meaningful or beautiful or, or right, and, and you kind of never noticed the overwhelming voice of God speaking through Scripture by the power of the Spirit in your conscience, you never noticed that, really? <laughs> so we're being freed to pay attention. And, and so we say things differently now. I, I, I honestly think it was a big hurdle for me. It, probably three years ago, uh, when I first actually told God and I meant it, well, yeah, I do love you. I, I really do. And it, a lot of my life has changed since then. Well, yesterday morning I had something similar. I, I was just sitting here praying quietly, and I, I just, the, but I really do worship this one. I worship none other. I, I've never worshiped anything except myself. <laughs> I thought I was pretty clever. But I was just talkative. But the, uh, the thing is, is that we pay attention. That means there's an outgo from us. We're reaching out to find him. We're not looking within. We're not searching our inner gypsy self and our utter atman or something like that. Whatever that even means. Um, no, we're being spoken to, called. You hear the, sh the voice of the shepherd? It's the shepherd who is the good one. <laughs> the guy who doesn't run away when the thieves come. The guy who stands guard when the wolves arrive. Uh, the good shepherd. He's on the job. And so hear his voice today. And I thought, huh, I've got to pay attention. Because if I'm missing him right here in this moment, right now, because he made this one and he owns it. In fact, he owns them all. What's the most important thing in this moment? Well, obviously, the maker thereof, the, the source of it. And we can't notice that. We can't pay attention without help and it's just the help he gives so when we ask for help from god we are asking for the spirit of god to come within us be prepared to welcome him and say thanks for coming you didn't have to and yet he did because he swore oath to his own honor that he would de deliver his children all of them he's not going to lose one he's not some amateur knucklehead savior when he sets out to save his people they get saved Think about Entebbe, and you probably are too young for this. Go look it up. Interesting uh, raid, even you know, with all this Arab Israeli stuff. There was some old stuff in Africa years ago. I believe it was in Uganda. Yeah, Entebbe, I believe that's right. And so, anyway, go check it out. But in other words, when the Israeli uh, military went in there, uh, they didn't go there just to kind of, generally speaking, free up folks and kind of make them feel comfortable. No, they went in to snatch a group of, of one plane load, uh, mostly Israelis, I believe. I don't maybe I don't think it was exclusively. I think there's a few Arabs in there, but at any rate, a successful raid. It wasn't an abstract. Uh, well, gee, we'll try to hope to cheer everyone up. Uh, we're we're going to walk in there and and pass out candy to the kids. No, it was a directed strike, and the people they came for 
were the ones they went home with. <laughs> he's like, well, actually, they're just a little bit like him. See, he's the genuine article, but that's how you hear. In other words, you, lots of things you got to flip on their head in order to see. Because it, it sounds a little bit like this. Who is the greatest? Oh, he who is least, the least, the least. Wait a minute. How does that work? Yes, I tell you the truth. The, the great ones among you, the ones who think they're big shots, uh, in the end, that's a bad place to be because the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. He's turning things the right way up for the first time in our lives and for the first time we're able to pay him attention. And we really ought to. But I just wanted to say in terms of this worship thing, I think this is going to change my life too. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. Because, you know, what everybody's trying to do is they're trying to get you riled up. They're trying to get you scared, trying to get you antsy. Uh, or maybe making some sort of financial decision, don't you know? Um, no, I'm not interested in any of that stuff. And what happens as we are able to listen to what previously was just silence, now we hear in a different way. It's supernatural. It isn't because I developed some... A marvelous gift and honed my skills no he's in it and that makes all the difference so go there today when things start blowing up and the wheels are falling off and you can't get through on the phone and what's this traffic jam about anyway why are we stopping <laughs> you know life <clears throat> i need to slow down i need to in the moment of all that nutsiness think but well, wait a minute the same father owns that moment too. And so to relax into his care and to actively stand up and do what you need to in the moment. <laughs> he's all about being everywhere and yet he's right here in the middle of your heart. And that's where you know him. <laughs> Have a good day and uh, run quickly. Run quickly to him. <laughs> hey, I just made that up.